Okay, maybe I start the last lecture. Uh, so first, uh, recall so, uh, what we have with Foucault categories. If you have x omega uh, compact symplectic manifold, and I, I skip the orientation B field, and also first chain class of tangent bundle is zero. Uh, uh, then we get uh, a, a triangulated category, uh, category over Novikov field, uh, which is Foucault category. And mm, uh, object of this category have kind of representatives which are single Lagrangian subsets and certain data on them. In particular, uh, if you have object in my category, uh, which has a representative supported on some single Lagrangian <coughs> subset, uh, C T T X, then uh, we can associate with this object. It's uh, uh, some class which will be a closed chain of L with coefficients in Z, top group chain, it defines a multi class. And then, of course, it, we get a class in Ernst homology of ambient space. This will be image of this class. Mm. But now, if if x is scalar, so we extend to some complex structure and choose uh, uh, n zero holomorphic form omega, then we get a stability structure. Mm. And the central charge. On K0 goes like this. It's so we map to n's homology and then integrate form omega, get a number. So that's it's up again by integration by omega. <coughs> okay. And uh, um, semi stable objects are those which can be represented by. Special Lagrangians. This L is special Lagrangian. And uh, uh, multiplicity is some kind of positive here. And I, rec I recall what is a Cita special Lagrangian? A Cita is an R. Argument is the following. So we have two equations. Uh, the restriction of uh, symplectic form vanishes, of two form vanishes, and the restriction of certain real n form, which is imaginary part of exponent condition related to two form and n form. And, and what we have in this picture, actually it's something uh, pretty nice. If you consider a set of equivalent isomorphism classes of uh, theta semi-stable objects, in given homology class, in middle homology of Z. Uh, here, of course, we should have this uh, uh, argument of uh, integral of omega theta is equal to theta. Should have this property uh, to speak about such things. Uh, it's certain. Uh, 
kind of non-Archimedean object. It's uh, it's uh, this model space of semi-stable object in this given class. It's kind of non-Archimedean space. It maps to something more concrete. It maps to uh, sigma special uh, closed chains, closed Lagrangian chains. Uh, so we get closed and special. So this is defined over QTR. This 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 Q? this left hand this uh, Novikov field. Novikov field, yeah, over Novikov field, yeah. This is also no, over Novikov. Field. Oh, it's over Novikov field, yeah. Or oh, maybe some extension, yeah. It's because it's already algebraically closed, yeah. But we can maybe Q bar. It will be K points of some non-Archimedean space. Yeah, so, uh, and this, uh, this is a finite dimensional kind of real space, uh, maybe singular one, and so we get something like tropical or real space. Yeah, this is huge homongous set, and here you get some finite dimensional piecewise linear uh, space. And um, I claim that in this geometric situation, it's very similar to situation with skewers. On this non-Archimedean space, we get Keller metric. We get kind of non-Archimedean Keller metric. Which uh, uh, will be mean that here we get just Riemannian metric. It's singular space, but uh, at least on some pass of strata, it has Riemannian metric. And um, what is the what the origin of this remaining metric? Let's consider this uh, chain, uh, kind of like Q of E, or maybe image of Q of E, and take a tangent space. L uh, let's, let's try to move this uh, this single chain. Single chain it means that you get some kind of union of a Lagrangian variety with certain multiplicities. It will be multiplicity. And all the boundary is zero. And but all pieces are sp uh, special Lagrangians. And when we move to this uh, to special chains, uh, then on each small uh, uh, locus we, we get a mm, section of normal bundle. And the normal bundle, uh, you can identify, you can substitute form omega. Kind of if you have variation of, of L, which will be this infinitesimal, if this is tied to omega, and you get one form on each stratum. And this form will be closed because we preserve this condition. But you can substitute n form, this guy, uh, this imaginary part, and we get, and we can substitute n form, get n minus one form, just vector field, substitute vector field, and it will be again closed. And the metric is defined by the following nice formula. Suppose you have two variations, infinitesimal variation of my uh, uh, special Lagrangian. Then I, what I do, I take sum over alpha, I, so I apply to one, one map, I apply to one to another, uh, another, another map. And it, in fact, it doesn't matter to which order, it one can check that it's, you get the same result. Actually, it's symmetric. And positive definite. Uh, when you uh, apply these things twice, you get integral of completely positive density here. What is the notation here? Delta 
uh, two, two, two tangent vectors to, uh, to the space of sp special Lagrangian chains. So it's a bilinear form. It's bilinear form, yeah. It's uh, claim it's symmetric and positive definite quadratic form. This different bilinear form is over Novikov field. No, 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 it's over real numbers. <coughs> so everything's over real numbers. Just okay, so you get a uh, metric. And uh, this one can check that um, this space has a fine structure because it's identified with first cohomology uh, of L. And uh, it has a fine structure and metric is given by second derivative of some convex function. Yes. Uh, Yeah, so we get uh, uh, this uh, uh, Foucault category gives example like a quivers. We get non intermediate model, we get stability, but more than stability, you get Keller matrix on model space of stable objects. And in fact, uh, the Keller class depends only on commodity class of omega, but actual Keller metric depends on a mutual position of capital omega and small omega. And here get infinitely many parameters because uh, one can say that. You fix your complex manifold and choose any Keller metric in a given class. The huge functional uh, space of this. And as symplectic manifolds will be all symplectomorphic. And then you get uh, automatically, uh, uh, for each choice, you get I I its individual Keller metric. And in projection from this guy to this guy depends on the choice of uh, mutual position of uh, uh, these two geometric data. So this as abstract uh, stability story depends on finite dimension, finitely many parameters, second class of small omega and capital omega, but actual, so this thing depends on finitely many parameters, but this map uh, and kind of a fine structure and metric depends on the choice of parameters. No, mutual uh, up to different form of facts. You have manifold plus simply two form and plus n form. And uh, there are infinitely many parameters for such guys. Okay, yeah, so that's uh, uh, one story. And next, it's very, very coarse property. It's, uh, it's something which is Jan Sobelman called support property. A long time ago, we started to think about this thing. And uh, uh, I will explain uh, it's in this example in a moment. Um, so one can formulate for any triangulate category with stability condition. So a st support property says two things. The first thing is what is written here. This central, uh, this homomorphism from K group to complex numbers goes through some finite rank lattice. It's not uh, some hu humong huge uh, things with all case theory, so <coughs> so it factorizes via a certain map. I called it class uh, in notation to some lattice, which is finite rank, and and, and some homomorphism from uh, lattice to C. And here an example for Foucault category. One can take a gamma will be middle cohomology, and you mod out by torsion, because torsion part is completely irrelevant from torsion part. Central charge vanishes. And the second property is the following one: pick a norm on finite dimensional space gamma cross R, which is R n. Which norm it doesn't matter because they're all up to constant equivalent. And then there exists a constant, depending on norm, uh, such that for any theta and for any semi-stable object, uh, what we have, if we take a, a class of this object, we'll get element in this lattice, so we apply this norm in this space. Uh, is bounded by constant multiplied by absolute value of, co of the central charge, which is just con complex number. 
Yeah, so it's kind of um, uh, some property controlling which classes, uh, which class in case theory can have semi-stable objects, which cannot. So we call it support because we get certain subset of gamma when you can expect non-trivial object. Uh, and why it holds for? It holds for Foucault category. It's, it's, it's kind of very simple argument because uh, when you have special Lagrangian, uh, uh, supported in special Lagrangian, uh, or supported in special Lagrangian, uh, then. Um, mm, absolute value of the central charge is the same as kind of mm, in, uh, is the same as integral of r now a real part over uh, what I did not have e and it's the same as up to overall constant as remaining volume of this chain. And now if you know remaining volume, then you can estimate integral of any closed form. Like choose some basis of, uh, of uh, middle cohomology of axis coefficients in R and lift to some representatives, to some closed forms, closed and forms, I don't know, it's called something like beta j, whatever, some forms. And these forms, uh, because manifold is compact, there, uh, there's some, of which form, this is some uniform bound on coefficients in, in spectrum remaining matrix. So kind of, let's say the C0 norms, it's less than some constant. And essentially use this constant, so you, you see it's immediately that all um, coordinates if you choose basis um, give, maybe, uh, uh, give you gives you bound yeah so it's completely trivial property but uh, that uh, was a geometric reason and uh, we suggest us to keep it in general it, it, it's just for Foucault categories and a, cla a claim that it's kind of obvious for quiver case the support property uh, let me just tell you one minute. And why it's really obvious? First of all, you get category is uh, representations, uh, uh, DB, of finite dimensional representations of QR of some field. And then uh, we, uh, how we make central charge? We map to uh, dimension vectors, z to the set of vertices, which will be my set gamma, and then map to c by dimension vector goes to some of the i di. We, we choose some complex number in upper half plane to make the stability. Yeah, so that's the first property is uh, really by definition, you get a lattice uh, generated by set of vertices. And why you get support property, uh, this second story, is because um, semi-stable objects uh, are either belong to hard, to just ordinary representation in degree zero, and then uh, it's in the hard in abelian category. Uh, then we get all di will be non-negative numbers since uh, some of them will be positive. And what you get, you get kind of map positive octant, map to the part of a half plane. It's kind of clear geometrically that uh, uh, mm, lengths of vectors here and here are kind of commensurable. Or it could be shifted in the shift of hard. Or, or it could be shifted of the element of hard. Then, depending on parity of shift, you get either all the i positive or all the i negative. You get shifted by negative, you get minus L characteristic. Yeah, so it's. 
and completely vacuous uh, in uh, query situation. And what it implies? Support property in general implies the following thing. If you consider set of the central charges, uh, E is theta semi stable for some theta, you get a subset of complex numbers. It is discrete. And it has at most polynomial density at infinity. Because uh, what happens, like imagine a situation that gamma is, let's say, Z cube, rank of the category Z cube. So you get gamma cross R is R cube. And by central charge, it maps to C, which is R squared. And what happens, you kind of can draw a picture like this. Imagine three-dimensional space maps to the plane by vertical projection. And here you draw some kind of cone around the kernel. And now consider integer points in R3 which do not lie in a, in a light cone. And that's only where, uh, if you translate what this means support property, it means that uh, that's where stable object can, can lie. And if you consider the circle of finite radius, you kind of do things in a finite direction, you get kind of finitely many p uh, uh, integer points in this thing, and number goes polynomially depending on rank of the lattice. Okay, so that's why uh, uh, it's uh, Mm, give certain control, and uh, mm, and with this support property, it's, it's kind of much easier to formulate and prove kind of a version of Bridgeland basic result. Then the model space of stabilities is complex manifold. Uh, namely, suppose we given a homomorphism from K group or category to to this lattice, and now want to make a um, stability condition with support property with central charge goes through this lattice. That of stability conditions such as G goes via lattice and, and has support property, as it's, I think, it maps to, by forgetting everything from home to gamma to C, which is Cn, <coughs> and dimensional vector space, mm. just to get this map, uh, residual map Z gamma. And, uh, and the claim, it's uh, locally homeomorphism. So what it really means is that you can move a little bit central charge, and then you can make a new stability condition. So in particular, get a complex manifold because it's just some kind of covering uh, of CN. Maybe some domains infinitely many, uh, mm. Why it's so? Uh, ah, first of all, support property will guarantee uh, uh, that you can move uh, this your central charge by certain amount, non-zero amount, and uh, like here can uh, rotate it a little bit. It, it still get projection and. Uh, Everything is well defined. So you kind of have a pretty low bound on how much you can move uh, your uh, central charge. And now if you move central charge a little bit, what will happen? Uh, in original, suppose fix some direction theta, and you get uh, 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 semi-stable objects. And all the central charge lie on array and kind of form a discrete set. Mm. And you're interested, don't interest go far away, consider kind of finite part of the things. So you have objects with finitely many central charges. Now you change your central charge, now you restrict Z deformed to some kind of a, a s small part of C, uh, C sigma. And then what happens, this central charge will they move a little bit, you get things in, 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 in an uh, angle sector. 
but you get to also kind of finitely many things on each finite distance, so it looks like a quiver, so you can mm, um, define for this deformed subcategory what is semi-stable object or not, just uh, looking in this sector, and just recalculate, define harmonizing filtration by, by finiteness properties, you get unique sub-object with maximal um, uh, 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 slope and so on. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's the whole definition, but geometrically it's actually very interesting because in general, wh what one can say, is what support property says that uh, property says is the following. You can uh, make some kind of continuous ob uh, object for each ray in C. Uh, we can associate a closed convex cone in the uh, in gamma tensor R, which lies over this ray, and it will be strict convex cone. It will not contain uh, the uh, whole line. It will be less than 180 degrees. So what 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 you really do? You consider not this, this ray. You consider small neighborhood. You get very narrow uh, angle sector. Take pullback and take convex hull of the all vectors which are represented by a uh, semi-stable object. And the support property says that you get certain kind of co convex cone, but then you can't limit when the thing goes to zero. You get one parameter family of strict cones. Mm, uh, uh, and this one parameter family of strict cones uh, gives you a certain game. If you uh, possibility, you start to rotate the central charge, and then again make s convex hull in the fi fiber, because this intersection of this set will be no longer convex. And it gives certain interesting question in convex geometry, how far you can go. Up you get kind of some a priori bound for, for how far you can go from different things. I think it's a very attractive question. Even if you have just finitely many rays, then you get some kind of like uh, analytic continuation up to certain uh, domain. It mm, looks pretty attractive, yeah. Okay. What, what do you mean by this? It, it, it does not contain the ray and the convex side because it's the unique. It, there is equality. Yeah. No, 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 not equality. No, no. What what happens in real life? You get uh, certain family of convex co cones, but now uh, no, but now you rotate projection, and then the pre image of the ray will be uh, no longer uh, so intersected with some kind. Of, uh, before intersecting with some one parameter family of hyperplanes. But we consider this different family of hyperplanes, intersection are no longer guaranteed that it will be convex. So then should take convex hull uh, <laughs> and so on. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so, so what we have here, um, we get uh, uh, two stories. We get, in Foucault category, we get non Archimedean Keller metric, we get support property, and I just want to say, say that and support property uh, generalize to Foucault category with coefficients, which I explained at the end of last lecture. Uh, so it was kind of interaction between algebra and geometry. It's for high category is coefficient. And I, I recall you what, uh, what happened. Is this uh, the service coefficient? Mm, mm. So at the end of last lecture, I have some, uh, described some very, very simple situation of categories with constant coefficients. So constant coefficients, there was certain category C0, which was equal to category I put at each point. It will be some triangulated category. Give us some field. And my manifold was a torus with some symplectic form. Uh, but now I want to put also complex structure. So it will be elliptic curve. And um, Th this should be some subtle charge with values not in numbers but in uh, forms, uh, which can be said the following. Suppose you have a central charge 
from your cat, you're going to get some stability structure in this central ch charge. And then uh, you define map from Zx kind of uh, for each point on, on the, uh, my torus, I get a map from uh, which one of the tangent bundle. The volume element is just one form here. And which will be given by the formula is Zx will be Z0 multiplied by certain omega, which omega will be uh, uh, one zero form, holomorphic one zero form on elliptic curve. Yeah, so it was uh, uh, essentially like product situation. And uh, um, cohomologically get not many parameters, but geometrically get many parameters because uh, in local coordinates, you can always find local coordinates x and y. So x will be no, not point of x, but be yes, on, on capital X, such that form omega will be dx plus e dy. So it will be real imaginary part of complex coordinate. And symplectic form is just certain two form. V rho is any C infinity function of x, y. It should be non-constant story. Yeah. And this will affect the whole geometry of stable object at the end of the day, like in previous situation. Uh, so the whole category here, total category, is just some kind of tensor product uh, by Foucault category of V. And by mirror symmetry, it's the same. Um, Foucault category of torus is the same as coherent shifts on elliptic curve. And this guy will be boundary drive category of what's called Tate elliptic curve on non Archimedean field over my K. <coughs> and Tate elliptic curve uh, is you take kind of analog of C star. Uh, as people on Drake John to write, you take multiplicative group as analytic space. Okay. <laughs> Kind of a fine line minus point as analytic space, and divide by powers of Q, where Q has norm less than one, and Q is uh, element of the field T to the area of the thing, which is integral of positive real number. Okay, and and then we get hypothetical stability condition. Uh, from k0 of c to zn cross z squared, then maps to c. Uh, the first guy is what? Uh, because uh, k, um, it's uh, from here get, uh, from c0 get class of, uh, uh, by, I assume that now this thing is has support property, yeah. And you think it's also will have support property. If K0 of my category C0 map, map to some lattice, it will be first map. And th this one will be first ho homology of my torus. And the, uh, and the map will be product, uh, if you get element here and here, what we are mapped to, it will be product of two complex numbers. It will be Z0 multiplied by integral of omega. Yeah, so that's. There's a picture which one can use for it, it, iterative construction of, of this story. And what was nice about this uh, story is that uh, because special Lagrangians in two dimensions are so simple, it's just straight lines in uh, uh, this local coordinate x and y. Uh, So one can try to see what are special Lagrangians. And uh, so st just remind you, stable object are kind of complicated things. You get on a torus, you get certain graph. Uh, 
uh, which is a straight in affine structure related to capital omega. The symplectic structure don't have any associated affine structure. Uh, it has finitely many edges. And then, uh, then I get certain decorations uh, for each edge in alpha. You choose an object of your uh, fiber category. Object uh, e alpha, and with the properties that theta alpha plus argument of Omega restricted to this edge, which is constant, should be equal to your capital sigma, which is unreal. Uh, and mm. uh, so I get these things, then I get more complicated things. Then I get certain gluing data at vertices, uh, which I explained in a minute, and the third you should add uh, some boundary chain solution of some Mauro Cartan equation. So it's a solution of certain al algebraic problem in form power series. And this is really complicated and possible, but uh, hard to make explicit. And And this is, and I want to explain that this second part is relatively easy. Uh, kind of, uh, the goal of my next few minutes will be kind of how to remove the things completely from the considerations. <coughs> so what are these gluing data? Uh, just assume for simplicity that the seat is equal to zero. It's just choose of convention. Uh, when you get a vertex of the graph, Uh, what we have, uh, we have a, a kind of vertex and some n spikes for certain number n. And, um, uh, and in fact, uh, uh, there was a picture uh, this can be since like a skeleton of disk with uh, n added intervals at infinity and this local category local Foucault category is representation of weaver n minus one at the end of the day uh, and uh, maybe I'll just draw again this my spikes here uh, so we get something like n plus now uh, just draw a horizontal line and we get some n plus spikes goes up and minus goes down and then we measure angles we get c to one plus sigma two plus and so on and get to measure angles in opposite direction so we get just some batch of numbers mm. the between zero and pi I assume for simplicity there's no horizontal direction. Now um, we have to put some objects with certain slopes on this thing. And how what is the gluing data? Just to join to this representation Q, it turns out it's it's something very nice. Gluing data. Uh, which is kind of part two here this certain gluing data, is the following. It's just one object in uh, um, category A0, which is heart of T-structure in A, mm. which will be abelian category, and two filtrations by numbers from 0 to pi, exactly by these numbers and these numbers, Filtrations, which are not hard on racing filtration. I call them anti hard on racing filtrations. Uh, what does it mean? It means that each associate gradient is semi stable with corresponding slope, 
but the aura is kind of opposite to what uh, is, in, is in the definition, kind of wrong order. And this thing is not canonical. Harmonic filtration is canonical, but this is there are many of them, wrong order. And mm. what does it uh, mean? So I get uh, some subobject, subobject many times in is zero, and you get some another chain of subobjects. And when you take associated graded factors, you get e something like e one negative, e two negative, up to n minus negative, and here you get to e one positive, e two positive, and plus positive, and they belong to certain uh, just to this using this rule uh, up to sign up to shift the belongs to heart of this structure. Mm. We write even a zero sigma minus a plus belong to a zero pi minus sigma i plus. Uh, so you get uh, the advantage is that you get everything is an abelian category. It's much more convenient to think. You don't. Uh, uh, it's like vector spaces. Yeah, so it's not complex. It's up to homotopy. It's yeah, so this is uh, mm, uh, uh, nice description. What are what is local data? But this is really nasty and complicated algebraic beasts. And I, I want to uh, explain a way how to avoid it completely. It was pretty. Miracles. Not in exactly this situation, but I will kind of similar situation. I start with slightly sim simpler situation, namely uh, it will be non-compact version. And this, is this will be related to uh, generalized honeycombs and horn conjecture, which you'll see in a uh, few minutes. So now, manifold is R2. Not, not elliptic curve, but just pl uh, plain. Omega will be dx plus i dy. So to just C, kind of just with the usual C, but mm. x y now global coordinates, and but symplectic form is certain density as before. We are always positive, and now I put uh, something which looks very very strange. Strange constraint, which does allow to be constant density. Of course, naively I would like to uh, constant density will be not good for me. Namely, uh, so two things. Uh, if I integrate, consider mm, volume respect to symplectic form of any strip in any direction, then it will be finite. But if I integrate any <coughs> sector which is bigger than zero degree, I get infinite. Yeah, such thing exists. For example, I take things equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared plus y squared. It will be logarithmically divergent for things and convergent. We can rest to some power between 1 and 2, I think this. Yeah, so the such thing definitely exists. And now for simplicity, I assume that my category, which I start to play with, it, I, I, I can reduce now to case of abelian categories. A billion category will be representations of some quiver or some field. And, mm, and stability is given by kind of quiver like data. Just numbers in upper half plane. Mm, and uh, it's category over for small a and big cat now a will be representations of quiver over big k which is again serious with real exponents 
It or could be any field, in fact. Or any field with continuous evaluation. Not necessarily serious. Mm. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, uh, slightly like it will be not all representation, representations such that uh, one uh, the following condition holds either uh, there, there exists a collection of norms. Metrizations, new i uh, uh, in metrizations of this corresponding components, such that for any arrow, uh, tr maps unit ball to unit ball. Or equivalent, one can say, is the same as my representation has a model of a ring of integers of OK. And in my first lecture, if you still remember, uh, I considered uh, uh, such category and uh, defined some flaw here. And uh, this choice of uh, um, uh, uh, there was a kind of theorem in first lecture that if object is semi-stable in this category, it's if it only if it admits a model such so that if you uh, make reduction to zero, you will get semi-stable guy. And such a thing you can call kind of baby case of harmonic matrix. E in of A is C to semi-stable. If there exists a metrization, uh, such thing called metrization of E, collection of metrization such that it's resolvable, uh, such that corresponding representation over uh, residue field with system semi stable, it's called harmonic metric. Okay. Now, what is this generalized conicomb correspondence? It's it's kind of conjectural. And one to one correspondence between between two things. Uh, yeah, first you fix object of A, so it means that representation of Q or over is the field which admits a model. But I don't choose a model, so we get some representation. And first things which I do, I consider two anti hardener single filtrations of E over k, uh, this, this both things are over K, over big K. Um, and of course, they are labeled by, by interval 0 pi. And um, uh, as I explained, this formula, it is a picture uh, like this, uh, which I <coughs> used to be in the vertex, um, where, where I use capital K as kind of new abstract field, forgetting that it's non-Archimedean. And the uh, next thing is, Choice of, of harmonic matrix, which I explained just one minute ago, what is harmonic matrix? Matrix on all associated gradients. E 
which are semi-stable. So they have associate grades. So it's be graded plus f plus minus of certain sigma of e. Yeah, that's one object. And second is, let me draw it here. And second uh, object is a path in the space of matrix. Infinite from infinite time, from minus infinity to infinity, uh, which produce um, finite non-compact spectral network in 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 R. So it will be certain in R square. So it will be uh, in spectral network will be kind of L. Uh, what, is, what, what goes on? So the picture will be, not this picture, it will be something similar, but here you get mm, some interesting picture in between. And maybe some rays will be separated by two or three. Yeah. So with, with a complex structure, can you say spectral network means R2C then, no? In R2 is equal to X. Oh, C or whatever in C. Yeah, um, in my manifold X. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so what what does it what does it mean? So I get map from T to new T, and this maps should be is kind of C infinity uh, in certain sense outside except finite many number of. Uh, of bad times, yeah, it's kind of piecewise, continuous uh, piecewise smooth. And for smooth, um, f for not bad t, it has a speed. And speed will be a, um, R filtration in, uh, as I explained, speed in all the situation is the same as R filtration on a representation of, of the residue field. It's things of a small field. And there are two axioms. Now, when you get some filtration, you get some real numbers, some finite collection of real numbers which label this filtration. Kind of are labels of these filtrations. Uh, which are numbers lambda i, maybe depending on t, you get finite collection of uh, real valid function, are in certain one to one correspondence with the following guy. You intersect your think with horizontal line y, y equal to t and get finitely many points. So the bit uh, uh, moment of time when you intersect vertex of the thing. So it will be x coordinates that correspond to x coordinates <coughs> L, uh, Can this line intersect the vertices or the bad thing? Bad things intersect vertices, goes through vertices, and the good are just in between when you get uh -huh. different branches, yeah. Now so uh, this real numbers and this is real numbers, and how I identify them? Here, I use my symplectic form in this complicated function R. The identification depends on R, on rho. And namely, uh, it will be, in my plane, get point zero, zero. Yeah, it kind of will be like zero, zero. And I use it, uh, some integrals uh, in a certain way. Uh, namely, lambda i of t, of t is equal to integral of from x i of t to plus infinity rho of x t dx. It will be convergent integrals. Maybe I should put infinitesimal also as integral over any uh, ray is finite. Minus the integral from 0 to plus infinity rho x t 
dx. So it can integrate from 0 to xi, mm -hmm. integrate all finite interval, and get certain one-to-one -one correspondence between, between real numbers and with some open interval in R. Ah, so it's some... Uh, this xi is not 0 anyway. This could be 0. Of course, yeah, it's, it doesn't matter. This could be position with respect to coordinate axis is irrelevant. It could, could, could be um, uh, zero and and this one axiom in the uh, second condition. So, so we draw some picture, get some kind of multi-valued function, and then this picture it should be straight intervals. Uh, intervals and rays. And then, uh, because it's gas filtration, we get some associated graded guys. And associated graded are semi stable. Theta semi stable. The theta is pi minus slope of my ray. Yeah, yeah so it will be uh, something which produces this picture which I want kind of on torus but on plane. But now I don't have to solve any of this bounding change, it's just family of metrics give me this picture. Yeah, so that's actually it was Fabian Haydn who proposed about year two this point of view which kind of seems to simplify enormously this bounding chains one can completely remove. And uh, now what is what is the correspondence? Correspondence is given by this only there is a map in one direction. <coughs> if I have this pass, which I call harmonic pass, uh, because at the end of the day it's kind of harmonic object. Yeah, from harmonic pass. Two, two filtrations over two anti hardness filtration over the uh, big field mm -hmm. and some norms on associated graded and harmonic metrics. Norms on graded quotients. Um, so, uh, for example, how to reconstruct F. I'll just go to one direction. We construct F minus. The F plus will be uh, similar formulas. Uh, so we get metrics on my representational query, like keep on one vertex. We get vector spaces. Yeah, metrics on vector space depend parameter, and it's kind of moves. It uh, shrinks in some direction, expands in another direction, and it has some certain behavior. T goes to minus infinity. And as I explained in uh, a situation, when you get this family of metrics, you usually get kind of flags at the limit. It grows in some direction faster than in other. The limit could be non-unique, but here in this situation it's unique limit. Uh, mm. And uh, um, namely, if you move to kind of negative direction, what you see, you get uh, Certain rays go with some, some one slope, another with another slope, and another slope. So we get finite collection of slopes. It kind of y, y goes to minus infinity. Here, very interesting kind of story, and you get certain slopes which gives me mm, first some numbers theta, theta i. You get slopes st slopes stabilize for negative time, and we get these numbers sigma one. Sigma n. Mm. I think it will be sigma one minus sigma one two two minus sigma n minus. Yeah, so be, so, uh, this angles. And this appears with uh, uh, certain multiplicity. And if mind will be filtration by by, by growth and different. Uh, when you consider two different directions. The the uh, the growth rush of north will go to infinity for different c 
similar ice uh, grow, uh, kind of no norm, uh, consider vector in one terms filtration, another terms filtration, the ratio of norms go to zero infinity depending on uh, order. And wh why it's so? Because uh, what happens when I calculate, uh, what happens with norms, you calculate the area of the things in between. And this goes to infinity, take exponent, of, so, so it gets diverged. But if, if they stay the same, the, uh, the, the, it will not go to infinity. Yeah, so exactly this convergent of integrals in the race says that they have the same speed of growth in, in branch of parallel lines, and completely different in if they are separated. And harmonic matrix on the associated gradient can be defined as the following way. On associated gradient, you define it as the following way. Um, just rescale, you take a vector uh, sitting in some sort of tonsil filtration, and now we uh, have metric depending on parameter t, and then rescale omega t by some number, by let's say t to to certain number, and number will be the following thing. It will be kind of integral which calculate you you uh, pretend you start with reference point zero zero, draw the picture, draw the single sector theta i, then go to this uh, y equal to t, uh, goes to very close to minus infinity, take this triangle and integrate over omega o omega volume, a a omega area of this guy. Yeah, so it's certain things which goes to infinity. But if you uh, after after rescaling, you you will have no divergence. Okay, and similar get f plus in the plus. And now I'll just finish before the break with two examples of this. Uh, yeah, so uh, story. Mm. First example, my viewer is just point, category just vector spaces, and stability is given by number, let's say square root of minus one, so nothing to speak. Any metric is harmonic, nothing to speak about. And if you read in this definition, there's only one anti hardening signal filtration because only one direction. And you see, uh, what happens, we have two anti harmonic field filtration, don't do anything with the vector space, but then two, two harmonic metrics, just two metrics. You get vector space with two norms. Space over k with two norms. And what pictures you can draw? The only thing you should draw just a bunch of parallel lines, nothing else. how one is related to another. <laughs> yeah, when you have two norms, uh, when you have two norms on vector space, on k to power r, that's r-dimensional space, then you can simultaneously diagonalize them. And then you get uh, singular values and consider logarithm of singular values, log of singular values, you get just a bunch of real numbers. Some of them coincide, some don't coincide. And in fact, mm. each of these lines will have certain multiplicity, it will be coinciding numbers. And here, when I get uh, uh, these lines, you draw kind of x, some certain numbers xi in R. Uh, multiply by multiply by y belongs to R. This will be a collection of my lines. And um, what the correspondence, it's again based on this reference point. You get somewhere point zero zero. 
and uh, because all this identifications was accurately not wasn't translation invariant at all, and my nothing was is translation invariant. So uh, it's given by certain integrals. Lambda i is it integral from if uh, if xi is positive and minus integral from xi zero times r if it's negative. Yeah, kind of you get uh, again this axiom that the volume is finite. It's <coughs> extremely crucial for for the for, for the array. Yeah. So that's it's uh, uh, yeah. So it's just in this case, it's series of simultaneous organization of two Hermitian norms. And in next case, that's really few cases which you can study. Next case is here is this one. And we, 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 we pick non-trivial stability condition, we get three types of semi-stable objects, dimension 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1. And consider E, which will be vector space, maps identically to itself. And, and we get two anti-hierarchy anti filtrations. One is one step. So you just get this object, it's already semi-stable, okay? Or two steps. Uh, namely, you consider a representation by zero map. Uh, this representation, it's a sub-representation of my things. And the quotient is this representation. Yeah, so this arrow means different things. It's a morphism of representation, it's this arrow in the viewer. Yeah, so it's Sorry to use arrows, two meanings in the same picture. Uh, so you get short exact sequence, it's also filtration. And now, when you consider, so this uh, 20 hertz we fix, but now we have to choose harmonic matrix on associated grid, which has three guys. And harmonic matrix on three associated graded things is the same as three matrix on V, or three norms on V. And uh, there is a kind of famous question in complex uh, linear algebra, um, what you can say about eigenvalues of three Hermitian matrices with sum equal to zero. There are some Horn inequalities. And the same uh, answer, but for different questions forms. Suppose we got three Hermitian norms in the complex vector space. For each two of them, we get logarithm of singular values. And this satisfies some again some inequalities. What is it? And this similar question, non-archimedian case. You can see the three norms of non-archimedian. It's just the same inequalities all, all together. And the, they correspond to this honeycomb picture, which how to draw it. Yeah. Yeah, I do I do picture like this. <coughs> Yeah, that's a typical uh, diagram. When you draw this diagram, you get only three possible directions for edges. And generic situation will be exactly this honeycomb picture. This horn conjecture, uh, this uh, uh, kind of, you can intersect this far away with these three perpendicular lines and get collection of whatever R, uh, three R real numbers with total sum equal to zero. It's uh, like uh, it's logarithm singular values for different pairs of Hermitian norms or non archimedean norms. And the Horn conjecture, which proven many times, says that things exist, it's only such picture exists. Yeah. And, and um, mm, uh, there are many proofs, none of them is very canonical. And from this abstract picture, the everything will follow because. Mm. Uh, mm, what happens? Here I get kind of this nasty function rho, but imagine that you start uh, with uh, kind of three, three times the same norm. If you get three times the same norm, you draw a picture like this. Nothing 
And this will be this, uh, by this conjecture, it will be this unique path. It will be exactly this guy. Now start to move it a little bit. And when you move a little bit, mm, you put some parameter epsilon, and suppose this guy will be of size epsilon, and this area will be of size of epsilon square. <coughs> and for kind of all measurement for in leading terms, you'll just really see this displacements of these vertical lines. So if you kind of uh, rescale your uh, valuation, then uh, for small epsilon, you get kind of uh, like situation flat space, uh, this, uh, this function which decays into infinity will be irrelevant because it's, and then you get, mm, as a leading term, you get this Horn conjecture. Mm, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I have to say that we still didn't prove this whole story. Uh, how we can uh, want to prove it? Mm. It looks like uh, this two anti hermitian filtrations norms are kind of like boundary conditions at plus and minus infinity for your pass. And then you get your pass connect uh, in space of matrix. Uh, you get certain constraints that you get this finitely many things. And this pass is, uh, one can write a solution of certain Euler Lagrange equation. Uh, you write certain action functional of certain Lagrangian depending on time, mu and mu dot, which is this filtration. And in certain things, this guy is convex in uh, the last variable. And then uh, it's, it's like mechanics, it's a negative curvature space, you should have unique geodesic. But it's like Finsleyan metric on very singular space, uh, yeah, so it's a bit of a nightmare. Uh, mm, this equation, why this solution is kind of really regular, why you don't have, why you can have infinitely many uh, uh, things. And there is some very beautiful a priori bound for the following reason. When you get original hardener, uh, you see that for this picture you get uh, two anti hardener filtration for your object and then for each object also get some pairs of anti hardener filtration. So this object with two, with two anti hardener filtrations gives you, you get some stable options, you have the central charges. And now you consider central charges of one part of the filtration and they're ordered and take the sum of complex vectors, so gets uh, some pass in a complex line uh, which maps to the central charge of your object. Or you get another part of hardness filtration, you get some certain polygon. And if you make kind of Legendre transform to this picture, it turns out that this polygon is decomposed, it's kind of almost the same picture, but it will be finite. Polygon decomposed in uh, with lengths which are uh, only discrete set of numbers by support properties decomposed in some other polygons, which are convex one. And of course, because they have bounded area, bounded below area, you get only finitely many possible uh, situations. So there's some kind of tiling with two anti hierarchy anti polygons. There's some kind of game, uh, kind of finitely many tiles of different size, of various size, bounded size. And you just <laughs> try to get the game, so it will be like kid's kid toy. Uh, all this stability structures. <laughs> so th this is the this this solution extremizes this. Uh, yeah, 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 no, no, no. When when you get any such picture, you decompose um, a, a priori given polygon by uh, tiles of which belongs to some finite set. So there are only finitely many possibilities for all this game. It is coming from this. Uh, if you extremize the action uh, action. Yeah, no, no. You can see the Legendre transform uh, of this picture. You get some convex function. Take Legendre transform. You get kind of dual picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, e for each vertex, each, each vertex you replace by uh, two-dimensional cell. No, but that's <coughs> uh, coming from this action. No? Sir? This, this action you consider S. No, uh, action, it's, uh, uh, no, d no it's, it's, it has nothing to do. It's, uh, it's the solution of euler lagrange equation, it's just reformulate all these properties. It's like uh, sh shortest geodesics and stuff for some Finsleyan metric. But um, then there's also a way to uh, uh, draw this picture as certain... Um, but these are not geodesics. Like this it's, it's also straight lines. It's, it's just kind of the same... 
there are vectors which are parallel to z, but it's a really central charges of some uh, objects. Yeah. Okay, so now we make some small break. Now, uh, yeah, so it's kind of really neat way to reformulate things. This boundary chain kind of completely disappeared. So a question about norms and some geometry of uh, these buildings and so on. Uh, now, mm, let's try to apply it to periodic case. Apply to x, which is r mod z plus r mod z. How we apply? So, uh, if, you, if you want to reformulate notion of this bounding chain on a torus, <coughs> go to universal cover. To universal cover. And on universal cover, you get kind of two periodic pictures, something like. something of this nature. Now we, what we do, we again start to intersect with horizontal line, y is equal to time. Now we get infinitely many points of intersections. Yeah, yeah, but on universal covers, if you intersect with horizontal line, we get <coughs> infinitely many points of intersection, infinite number of intersection points. So it looks that you should get infinite dimensional representation of a quiver. But uh, we have still uh, shifts. X goes to X plus integers. And so it should act on this story. Action. And there is kind of... Uh, obvious guess what to uh, do here. We should have norm on infinite dimensional position, which in invariant under shift. Mm -hmm. Norms, uh, norm of t is invariant under the action. Yeah, and now one can make this kind of exercise. What, what is all about, what does mean? Infinite dimensional space, z action, and norm invariant under z action. Yeah, it looks kind of complicated things. Let's just think about individual vertex. And get some vector space. Mm. Infinity will be some infinite dimensional space of a non Archimedean field. Now, although it looks frightening, non Archimedean field already is something infinite, it's doubly infinite. And the action means that it's module over Laurent polynomials in one variable. And it's kind of finitely generated modules because up to shift you get finitely many orbits. Uh, and uh, let's kind of assume it's not over all polynomials, let's assume it's kind of module over a uh, ring of functions on tube domain, on annulus, instead of kind of analytic function annulus, and annulus is given by inequalities for some epsilon. Yeah, so it will be series in uh, Laurent series instead of Laurent polynomials, so Laurent series which converges in this domain, whatever it means. Yeah, and so, yeah, so to, uh, and it's kind of result assumes that it's free module over this guy, so it's infinity is module over the thing, it means it's a section of analytic analytic sections of some uh, analytic bundle. On analysis. And now let's make give a definition. 
a bounded metric. on this thing is metric restricted to circle say is a prenorm on this v infinity uh, satisfied to uh, to constraints such that it's z invariant it means that multiplication by z from infinity to inf infinity is isometry. And uh, this word bounded, I say it's uh, uh, some pretty weak property uh, for boundness, modernness. You do the following. Uh, uh, assume uh, actually this guy, it will be free module, choose trivialization. Is module over utilization of your bundle, uh, then uh, there exists a constant uh, depending on trivialization such that for any uh, element of C infinity, which you can imagine like section of my bundle, I suppose it's non zero, what I have, I have, uh, if you consider norm of this section. It's up to uh, upper low bound is the same as uh, supremum of this S of Z over unit circle. <coughs> it will be in coordinate space, uh, maximum of coordinates on the circle. Mm. Oh, so that's some condition. Why it's a reasonable, uh, why I called it symmetric on a bundle? It's metric, it's a uh, Hermitian metric or uh, non communal metric on the dimensional space, but not on fibers. It's kind of a different uh, notion. But one can make an exercise. One can apply a situation because all words make sense over complex numbers instead of non non communal field. For k equals c, you can see the ring of analytic function, holomorphic bundle. Sections, you got infinite dimensional space, and I want to make pre Hilbert norm, and with the same boundless condition, and the same as Hilbert norms are the same as Hermitian norms on on a circle, which are measurable functions. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of uh, pretty funny mm -hmm. map. This this bounded matrix. Yeah, uh, let's trivialize bundle. We will bundle. And this, uh, 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 we'll consider this kind of uh, something a bit larger than poly uh, Laurent polynomials is efficient CR and this is norms and takes this sort of variance. So the claim is the bounded metrics are the same as measurable maps from S1 to Hermitian r by r matrices and the sink is bounded above and below and less than c to some identity in greater than c minus two identity uh, like in between uh, sandwich between uh, uniformly between two sinks mm. sorry Lebesgue measure yeah 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 uh, there's I don't know what is Lebesgue measure on this non circles. It's yeah, hard. I mean. Yeah, <laughs> but over complex numbers, it works completely perfectly. It's it's, it's really funny way, and mm. the idea is that it's kind of a uh, good notion of um, Hermitian metric on analog of non archimedean geometry. Just formally, it's kind of globally. It's a bit uh, mm, a strange way, and now when you consider pass, um, uh, let's mean. Uh, now it, it changes horizontal line. You consider a uh, Hermitian metric, but you restrict your bundle not to unit circle, but circle of larger, larger radius. So in complex case, it means that you just make Hermitian metric everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So this whole story 
it's kind of uh, reformulation as a whole pass has a falling in this situation has a falling meaning you just construct Hermitian metric on a vector bundle on whole uh, mm, analogs not on circles but everywhere <laughs> for each t of r a bounded norm uh, bounded metric on very restricted on very restricted to to the circle epsilon 12 of z equal to exponent of t yeah yes yes it will be uh, mm. Uh, the story, yeah, and here, yeah, it's kind of a start analysis. Um, something is kind of wrong. We wanted things to be continuous, but it's measurable, yeah, so there's some question of regularity, yeah. And uh, so my philosophy is it's all kind of analytic questions is non commutative geometry should be re reduced to question in real geometry when we understand. And it, and, uh, Yeah, but the basic thing is that all this object of Foucault category will be by mere symmetry transformed to uh, uh, bundles with norms. Yeah, so there'll be no more holomorphic disks, it will be purely kind of, kind of replacement of Foucault categories by some kind of most mainstream mathematics, I have to say. That's just, just no holomorphic uh, foundations and so on. Yeah. Uh, all this picture generalized to several variables. If you get kind of n variables in C star or K star, and you can see the product of circles, <coughs> and you want, uh, you, you can do the following thing. Consider vector bundle defined in small neighborhood and define a metric as a norm on the space of sections, which is in the very, for which multiplication by each coordinates are unitary operators. And it turns out it's the same as differential geometric notion complex case. So it's kind of abstract linear algebra in infinite dimensional story. It's reduced to usual uh, geometry. And all this fits to uh, mirror symmetry. Mirror symmetry is uh, the following situation. I recall that when we have model space or whatever, uh, super conform field theory, if you go to one direction, you get some manifold with scalar metric, you get another manifold with scalar metric. But if you go simultaneously, you get something else. You get a kind of tropical base on which you get vibration by Torah and it will be dual torus vibration for di different picture. And I, 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 at this moment, you identify Foucault category on one side and coherent shifts on another side. Uh, yeah, so I'll just assume that I have kind of mm, torus vibration. Suppose B is a manifold with Z affine structure. You can imagine again torus or Rn. Then um, you get X the cotangent bundle V. You get torus vibration, and it will be symplectic manifold uh, fibered by Lagrangian tori on, on the base. Or it could be Something else could be some a uh, non archimedean variety, let's say M, which also projects to the base. And uh, the notion of torus vibration means the following it's 
base it's locally embedded to Rn, open domain, and the map is given the following. It's and you get kind of like invertible coordinates. They go to logarithm of norms. So complex numbers, it's completely clear and kind of formally the same in non-Archimedean case. So you get kind of generalized tube domain. So this is generalization of this picture. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean kind of uh, both varieties. Uh, if I interpret A model on one variety and it will be uh, the symplectic manifold and B, and B model will be on dual variety, it will be so you like that. Yeah, yeah, this is so mirror symmetry. This is mirror symmetry situation, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, S yeah. So, um, uh, so uh, uh, usual homological mirror symmetry. Uh, says the following: that uh, when we consider something like Foucault category of x omega is equivalent to uh, bounded category of of coherent shifts, but actually better to write something else. It's called perfect complexus on M. And perfect complexus is, um, uh, uh, what is this? It's perfect complex. I, I, I remind you, if you get, it's kind of can be defined complex geometry, but the same as non-Archimedean geometry. It's, uh, you cover your things by uh, open domains. Kind of in good situation, finite covering is enough. Uh, it's really like like a drawn picture. On each new alpha, you, you draw finite complex of finite dimensional vector bundles. So these are trivial vector bundles. Not trivial, maybe locally trivial. Local. Or can you even you make it small? Can you make it even trivial of, of vector bundles? And on intersections, you get two complexes, and you should establish quasi-isomorphism, some map which induces isomorphism homology. And then on triple intersection, you should make some homotopy and so on. Yeah, it's kind of concrete way to present the object of this perfect complex. This of course, is some abstract stuff, but that's uh, that's the picture. Yeah, so that's. And this category over both over k. And what all the story seems to suggest that there is a kind of uh, equivalence of categories over a ring of integers, yeah. uh, kind of ex extended to the following thing. I, I remind you this for k category constructors the following way: we have this various singular Lagrangian subset. We get categories defined over ring of integers, take inductive limit, and then invert small parameters. Let's do not invert small parameters. This kind of limit of single Lagrangian space of this okay, category 6, which is over O of k, should be equal to uh, perfect complexes with norms. Okay. Yeah, that's. Uh, uh, Yeah, so this is question, what is perfect complex with norm? Yeah, usually in great geometry when people do things that they have kind of very uh, simple picture, uh, class of norms, they consider they use <coughs> things like uh, models to make reduction to the ring of integers of service, because you have a variety of bundles and so on, it will be kind of norms. But, uh, but norms are very special, it's like piecewise linear with integer slopes, and that's we definitely we need something more, as, as you will see. Um, so it, uh, one should do it kind of by hand. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh, because in general norms uh, is, I don't know what, it's uh, this very huge infinite objects, but there are some kind of class, class good norms which we can, uh, which are concrete objects given by finite amount of data. Mm. Yeah, just for individual vector bundle, I want to say what is a good norm. Uh, how, uh, suppose I get kind of point on your space, 
I'm analytic. You want to describe in, in neighborhood of point what is a bundle with a good norm. Each bundle has one norm. No, no, many, no, of course, norm. Like in bundle, can use Hermitian norms arbitrary each point. Yeah, it's it's similar story. Mm. Yeah, yeah. F uh, uh, to make certain formula, one want to write some kind of formula producing norms f for all neighborhood. And what came to my mind is the following: you, you first, you choose finite collection. Uh, whatever. A and one uh, finite collection of sections near point of dual bundle and such that they span all dual bundle so uh, so we consider linear combination of section get at each point they form a basis as a container basis then you get also some collection of uh, germs of analytic functions yeah, it was uh, these things are still non archimedean objects I'm serious with some residue field and then there will be some uh, third guy will be a collection of maps phi i are functions let's say continuous functions on uh, set positive ray to power n2 real valued functions for i from 1 to n1 yeah this will be linked with real analysis with functions and when you have such uh, data we can define for each point y closed to x and for any vector in a fiber I want to define norm and the definition will be the following it will be maximum over all i from 1 to n1 you consider uh, s mm. I of V at point Y, you get some element of your field or maybe extension, take a norm of this. So, uh, and uh, at least one of these guys will be positive, strictly positive, because this thing spent everything for V, even V is non zero. And multiply by some non zero number, which you calculate completely formally, exponent of FI and apply to real numbers, which are norms of this F1 of Y f and 2 of y. Now from this non archimedean guys you produce some non-zero, non non-negative uh, non numbers, apply, get an arbitrary way if you like some real number and yeah so it's some kind of norms which from which you get get formula and can manipulate and uh, I think this is a kind of good class of norms which are sufficient for uh, uh, stability issues uh, now so the question is why one thing is related to another for example here's uh, some Lagrangian subspace subset why when you get norm how you get Lagrangian subs uh, subset in real symplectic manifold yeah it is kind of completely uh, different story mm. Yeah, so it's here some open question how to do it and I have certain guess how to get single Lagrangian 
uh, subset L. And also on a smooth part, you get finite dimensional complexes and so on. Uh, so the proposal is the following. Uh, there is uh, something in shift theory called micro-local support for shifts. It's by Kashivara and Shapira. If you consider shift of anything, it could be more or less every, whatever you want, of anything, on a smooth manifold, in fact, maybe C1, I think it's enough, uh, uh, manifold, then you get B, say, or manifold, um, y. then you get um, closed quasi-tropic conical subset, it's macro-local support of shift, shift I don't remember, F, sitting in cotangent bundle. And mm, mm, uh, yeah, first of all, uh, it has some part on zero section. Zero section, it sits on zero section where the shift is non-zero. Uh, it's al already zero covector will be part of micro support. But what to do with non-zero non, um, covector? So you get kind of like x0 belo belongs to micro local support. If and only if. Uh, if f is trivial near x, it doesn't belong to microlock support if it's only trivial. Uh, but point xp for p non zero cotangent vector be doesn't belong uh, to microlock support. It means that you can mm, do the following you consider kind of half, uh, lo choose local coordinates, make a half space and consider sections of shift on this uh, half space, it can extend a little bit outside, like solution of, like heat equation, you can mm, extend to positive time, but can not to do it negative time. So uh, shift of solution of heat equation uh, has some interesting macro-local support, because it can move only forward in time, but not backwards. And this is macro-local support, it's exactly about such properties for arbitrary shifts, yeah, this possibility to move things. And it's pretty not trivial that to get something quasi-tropic. Mm -hmm. And in a good situation, it's Lagrangian. And I hope that in this situation, we get <laughs> Lagrangian uh, But it is conical. And where is the shift now to do shift? The idea is the following guy. We get shift E, whatever, shift E, uh, uh, perfect complex with norms. It's called E with some norms. And now uh, I will construct a shift on base of my uh, torus vibration multiplied by real line with some coordinate tau. And what will be germ of sections at point B tau, say? It will be uh, sections of E on neighborhood of uh, on the torus kind of with norm less than tau plus epsilon for any epsilon for small epsilon you make uh, smaller and smaller I think it's certain definitely a shift and uh, conjecture that it's for, for good metrics Micro local support is Lagrangian. But it's Lagrangian in what? In cotangent bundle B cross RT. And it has two properties. It's conical, uh, bec uh, because the whole story is conical. Conical. And also invariant under shift by tau, because we can multiply by constant. Since it doesn't really change. And if you try to think what is, does it mean, it means that you get non-conical Lagrangian cotangent in B. Mm. 
but then we have also multiplication by uh, you have kind of automorphism of my situation I can multiply by coordinates uh, this invertible coordinates in this in zi and it means that the whole story is invariant under shift and then uh, we, in projection it has kind of will have infinite limiting branches but then projects it gives certain uh, object on a torus vibration not on a cotangent bundle it will be have infinitely many things and when you shift you get mm, yeah, even in the simplest case you get kind of like link infinitely many whatever, parallel curves things like this in one variable and you shift to get things on it on a um, s1 vibration and then one can make a simple exercise for example mm, if you get certain domain in b some domain and we get real function from this domain whatever u to r arbitrary real function like c infinity function and then consider trivial bundle kind of o or m kind of trivial rank one bundle but it put kind of trivial metric multiplied by exponent of f of pro prim of pr projection of point you multiply by function which exponent to positive function which is pulled back <coughs> my positive function here and then if you make calculation with this definition with the shifts and so on you get image of graph of differential which is Lagrangian manifold in cotangent bundle and project to a torus yeah so that's uh, by whatever intuition it's really what should what should one correspond to another mm. and then uh, it, it seems that one have uh, Mm. Now try to, with this language, one does, does use the word Fouquet category at all. No holomorphic disk, nothing, just some game with, with filtration, so on. And the proposal is the following for algebraic geometry, how to construct stability condition. You make this non-Archimedean SYZ fabrication, construct formally dual guy, should be something, should be, uh, uh, of course in real life you get not some fibers are singular should be done in singularities but uh, even without singularities it's a big question mm. now on this symplectic manifold which construct completely formally just torus vibration you choose some complex structure choose some holomorphic form and now start to solve a uh, real Monchamp equations that this micro supports a special Lagrangian guy yeah so it's mm, yeah, so it's eventually kind of tautology. I start <laughs> with Foucault categories with the same question. But now the, the, the story is that I don't have this algebraic uh, horror which related how to go to the spawning chain. It's purely mm, mm, uh, kind of usual mathematics. And uh, of course, it's uh, uh, in high dimension, it looks horribly complicated. Question of analysis, geometric analysis for single Lagrangian subspace. Uh, what is going on but the advantage is uh, that we can do things in arbitrary dimension and in the uh, last lecture I explained things which are much simpler you get only straight kind of graphs step by step when you iterate this construction with torus and uh, two dimensional torus and so on because in, uh, in complex one dimension special Lagrangian just graphs it's uh, not, a, not a big deal but uh, so analysis is kind of and the equations troubles disappear but then the price to the pay is that you get um, not uh, kind of iterated a series ring kind of very iterated limit and uh, not not a single limit here we get single limit uh, just one uh, uh, norm and not norms of norms or norms and so on but complicated analysis so something should be paid mm. here uh, so the question is can one do without non archimedean fields at all? Yeah, this non archimedean fields is just kind of like degenerate families. Mm. Uh, that's the next uh, uh, level of complexity. But what I can try to guess here, just doing on this case with uh, one limit, uh, that one should really <coughs> give a description of your stable objects as complex of vector bundles. And the length of the complex should be uh, something in one domain, something in another domain, 
And that's people in differential geometry haven't done. Because they're usually still locked in question about what, what happens if it's just one vector bundle. Or it's, the stories could be not even complex of vector bundles, it should be described as complex of different lengths and different parts. And why it's so? Because in this SYZ picture, we just take projection by torus, by some base, and are interested in special Lagrangians. In special Lagrangians, um, if you consider how, uh, look, uh, it's projects here, it, it could be smooth, but when project here, it has some faults. Mm -hmm. And somewhere it has some, like one preimage, somewhere three preimages, and then you intersect, you, inter you represent it like rank one bundle, or maybe rank three bundles in certain degrees, the mass of index gives you degrees. So it means it should divide at least your base on several domains with some real boundaries, and then the domain you describe by complexes of uh, its own lengths. And this suggests maybe in some complex situation one also should divide by open domains, um, but it's kind of pure fantasy with no real mm, uh, reasons. Yeah. So you, this is a perfect complex with the norm, and yeah. in the construction, how the norm comes here? Norm? Ah, because I put uh, uh, this norm new of section here. Ah. Yeah, I use this norm here. <laughs> here, yeah. Ah, okay. yeah, yeah, and. And also, the kind of the last remark is this: uh, uh, when I construct stability, I always say uh, say have complex structure and uh, holomorphic volume form, and that's actually not good uh, because um, mm, the stability structure depends on uh, uh, as abstract algebraic gadget depends on only on cohomology class of this volume form, and it cannot run through all cohomology of your manifold. So this is a kind of basic trouble is that if you consider some, let's say, Calabria variety, uh, X, let, let, ah, first we start with symplectic manifold, uh, and then choose all complex structures G and then it will be uh, holomorphic forms. Mm. And th when you consider homology classes, you get certain elements in middle homology with complex coefficients, and they run, run through certain sub subspace, and it's not all not a domain open domain image is not an open domain in modular space in, in homology. And by bridging theorem, it should kind of vary stability uh, freely in, in some neighborhood. Mm, yeah, for, for three-dimensional Calabria varieties, you get kind of like holomorphic Lagrangian cone here, but not the whole domain. And the idea is that maybe we can, um, what we really need for this form. For this form, we need the property that omega restricted to any Lagrangian subs subspace is not zero. And it looks to be that it's the only condition. So there's a question of linear algebra. You take space R to N with symplectic form. You can see the N's mm, power of dual space, multiply with complex numbers. And you have consider uh, elements here which non-vanish on each uh, Lagrange gay. Actually, there are two components of the space. There's some kind of right-oriented and wrong-oriented. You can see the only right-oriented part, part. And for all of them, Mm. Uh, it looks that all this analysis should go through, uh, uh, like for holomorphic forms. So we don't don't really need complex structure at all. Um, we define flow given by argument of of the restriction, and so on. And then uh, the total area decreases, and maximal value of argument also decreases. Yeah. So there are a bunch of interesting inequalities which goes in the right direction. And um, it looks that that's a right class of uh, uh, geometric data for stability condition, more general, just as complex forms. Okay, and yeah, so it will be kind of eventually marriage of analysis and algebra. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you.